that's very interesting explanation yeah. because now it makes sense to me peter why russia has moved two planes full of gold from venezuela why a, a full plane from switzerland flew to china with gold yeah. Do you do you have any opinion on sort of where the Chinese economy is headed right now? You know, Evergrande sort of put some of their economic woes right in everyone's faces. And I think a lot of people were a little bit blind to that before before the Evergrande. Yeah. yeah, you know, there are a lot of uh, potholes in the road, mm -hmm. you know, to mm -hmm. China dominating the world. Uh, but, you know, the U.S. economy experienced similar growing pains along the way. So I think that overall, uh, the Chinese economy is positioned to be the dominant uh, global economic power. You know, I, you know, China has dominated the world for a lot longer than the U.S. has. I mean, you go back throughout yeah. history and you look at various periods of time where China was you know, the strongest, largest economy in the world. I mean, so uh, America's uh, position, you know, what, 100 years uh, yeah. where that's been the case. So, I mean, China's had that position for many, many centuries, uh, maybe, you know, th I don't know the exact number of times. I mean, how many how many centuries, uh, but but many. And and so China dominating the world is more than norm, you know, Mm -hmm. And and so I think they're obviously going to be back on top. I think the majority of this century, which is really young, right? We're in the, the yeah. second decade of the century. Um, and, you know, long before we get to the middle, I mean, I think even by the end of this decade, it's very likely that China will be a larger economy than the U.S. Wow. Well, wow. that's interesting. I want to go back to one point, uh, Peter, about the uh, financial market here in the U.S. And, and because I'm a little bit perplexed as to uh, uh, which direction this might go. And this one has to do with the stock market. Mm. OK, there are those who are saying, you know, should we be expecting another crash like the one in the 1930s? On the other hand, there are those who are saying, no, you don't have to worry about that because stock market is performing well despite whatever the economy of the U.S. Which one is which? Yeah. Well, I don't think we're going to have another crash like the 30s. But that doesn't mean you don't have to worry. Hmm. Because during the 1930s, we were on the gold standard. Okay. We don't, we, we don't have that we don't benefit have anymore. Yeah. We do not. And, and so... The market can still crash as much as it did in the 30s if you measure it in the price of gold. So I think in terms of gold, and gold's around 1,800 an ounce right now, yeah. and the Dow's around 36,000. But if the Dow crashes to the point where it's worth one ounce of gold, which is what happened during the 1930s, you know, you got by about 1932, uh, you know, the Dow and gold were about the same price. That could happen again. And maybe it happens with, you know, the Dow at 50,000 and gold at 50,000. Mm -hmm. But if the Dow and gold are the same price again, the Dow crashed. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what the nominal price is. Because see, this time around, it's the dollar that's going to crash. Right. So if you're simply measuring the value of stocks with dollars, you know, if the dollar itself loses a lot of value, uh, then, you know, it, it may look like the stock market's gone up. It's like if you're six feet tall and I give you a ruler that only has six inches in it and now you mm -hmm. measure yourself, it doesn't mean you're 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 12 feet tall. You got to look at that ruler. I've cut the ruler in half. Your height hasn't changed. It's the ruler that's changed. And so now you, you're taller because a, a foot now has six inches, right? Uh, so if the dollar loses a lot of value and then you go and try to price stocks, well, obviously the price is going to go up when yeah. you're measuring stocks with money that's worth less. Gold is an objective measure of value. That ounce of gold doesn't change. The government doesn't print any gold. So if you really want to know what's happening to prices, you need something like gold at, as an arbiter. So you can look at it through a lens that doesn't 
change. And if you do that, you will see a crash in all of these overpriced assets. And, you know, and the way Americans will see that crash, right? Your stock market portfolio, maybe it doesn't go down or maybe it goes up. Maybe it doubles. But when you go to the supermarket, everything is 10 times as expensive, right? right? Your, your electric bill is 10 times as expensive. So if, you're, if your stock portfolio has doubled, but your cost of living has gone up 10 times, your stock portfolio has actually lost value yeah. because its ability to help you know, offset your cost of living has been diminished. The real value of those stocks has gone down relative to all of the goods that you want to buy. Because when people invest in the stock market, nobody buys stocks because they want stocks. They don't hang the certificate you know, on a wall and admire it. People are buying stocks because they hope they can sell them at a profit or take the dividends and then go out and buy stuff. It's the stuff that they want. Stocks are just a means to get you more stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, but if the price of the stuff you want is skyrocketing compared to the value of the stocks you own, you're getting poorer, not richer. Wow. That's very interesting explanation because now it makes sense to me, Peter, why Russia has moved two planes full of gold from Venezuela. Why a a full plane from Mm -hmm. Switzerland flew to China with gold. Yeah. And yeah, well, of- some of these countries now don't trust having their gold stored by third parties. Yeah. They, they well, want it that- themselves. That makes sense, Peter. That makes sense because I didn't put the two and two together at the time when mm-hmm. I came across that info. Uh, only to find out last week that Russia is working on dumping the U.S. dollar. Yes. They are moving into that direction. So could it be? Yeah, that- I mean, I tell all my clients, you know, you don't want to be the last one on your block to sell your dollars. You wow. know, you got it. You got to wow. get out early. Wow. 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 That's that's very interesting. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't I didn't realize that. But at the time when I came mm-hmm. across that info, because uh, I, I had some of my contacts that I talked to in Europe and, and I was like, hmm, it just didn't done on me at the yeah. time, Peter. That's a, so your yeah. explanation makes perfect sense to me now as to why that is. So, well, so go ahead. No, you go ahead. So he, because we have a really global audience, one of the things that we're interested in, and I would love your opinion on this, Peter, is, you know, the U.S. is going through a lot of these um, financial woes, let's call them, but that affects the entire global economy. So how do you see it impacting the Chinese economy, the Russian economy, and sort of the global economy as a whole, as all of this shifts around? Because we are seeing countries like Russia, for example, trying to get away from the U.S. dollar. So how does that impact everyone else? And how do you see that maybe reshuffling? And does the U.S. dollar lose reserve currency status? What, What do you see happening there? Well, it's totally going to upend uh, the, the current economic system mm-hmm. where Americans, you know, really sit in an envious position. You know, we are the major beneficiaries of the dollar's status mm-hmm. yeah. because it enables yeah. us to live beyond our means. Mm-hmm. We can import all these goods without having to produce them. Yeah. And, you know, it's expensive to produce goods. It takes real resources and, you know, creates pollution, right? So we it get does. the benefit of all these factories without actually having to deal with them. They're, they're yeah. in some other country. Yeah. And because we have the reserve currency, you know, we can borrow a lot of money, but we don't have to save much money, mm-hmm. you know, and the borrowing, you know, and spending, that's the fun part. The saving and, and producing is the hard part, right? So we, yeah. we just get to do all the fun stuff and the world is doing all our, our heavy lifting. So, you know, when the dollar crashes and it will crash, then our whole standard of living is going to implode with it. But as bad as that's going to be for America, it's actually going to be a relief for the rest of the world because the rest of the world will no longer have to bear the burden of supporting the U.S. economy. So the rest of the world will have more stuff to consume and uh, they'll have more of their savings to uh, invest productively in their own economies. They won't be lending as much to us. Uh, so they're going to reclaim their savings. They're going to reclaim the consumer goods that they produce. So the rest of the world is going to get to have more. And America is going to have to make do with a lot less. 
Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin. It went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, Here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.